everyone welcome to today's episode today i will talk about attack surface management also known as asm we'll be talk talking about types of asm how it works what are the adjacent tools and domains how it is used in soc how is it available in the market that's all so let's get started so before i talk about asm i would recommend you to start taking notes if you are watching this on youtube take screenshots and if you are interested in the mind map that i built drop in a note on my youtube channel or on my twitter handle and i'll email the copy to you okay so what is attack surface management it is a process of continuously discovering identifying inventorying and assessing the exposures of an entity's it state also known as digital footprint of the enterprise along with the exposure so what attack surface management as a domain does is it continuously discovers the digital footprint of the enterprise along with the possibility of exposure that's the simplest definition okay now why do we do it is because digital assets or it infrastructure is ever growing in today's connected world as well as because of this connections there is unintended exposure of assets that can be used by cyber criminals for various purposes essentially malicious purposes Okay. now asm is part of a comprehensive cyber security strategy you can't protect what you don't know about okay. so it's very important to have asm as a process uh, in your cyber security strategy now organizations can reduce their risk of being successfully attacked by continuously identifying and managing their attack surface okay so if you know what your assets are you can build strategies to protect them now the key use cases that are addresses addressed by uh, asm are uh, asset discovery so it identifies all the devices and systems that are connected to the organization's network both on premises and in the cloud uh, external asm focuses on public facing assets only okay the second use case is vulnerability assessment which is about identifying and assessing the vul- the severity of vulnerabilities in these assets the third use case is cloud security posture management which is all about discovering misconfiguration of publicly exposed cloud assets it is also used for mna due diligence so that organizations can understand the cyber exposure of potential mna targets it is also used in the domain of governance risk and compliance grc to confirm adherence to compliance and regulations by understanding the risk associated with supply chain and third party vendors right so if you have a relationship with a third party and uh, you want to know their cyber risks uh, you just use the asm process to understand those cyber risks and then take a decision it's commonly used uh, by compliance organizations uh, to understand how this the partners or the third parties that they work with have exposure and that's how they take the decisions now what are the types of asm there are two types that are very common uh, the internal asm and the external asm let's start with the external asm so it it's the outside in view of your infrastructure so essentially what would hacker see if they scan the organization for entry points or the digital footprint okay so essentially what it includes is your exposed infra and this could include any cloud based servers expose api services web uh, web and database servers email servers dns mx records certificates domain ports ip urls github servers ftp servers ot and iot devices essentially your entire digital footprint that's connected to internet okay the second thing it can tell you is the configuration state of these connected devices so it includes vulnerable application os databases and all this is done by doing passive scans okay it can also tell you about misconfiguration uh, in services like databases app s3 buckets it also tells you about data leaks so essentially any documents or sensitive information that's available on uh, internet or dark web it also talks about code leaks email credentials that are sale uh, that are on sale on dark web uh, emails that are exposed anything on social media that's related to organization it also captures things like user monitoring which includes high value targets and vip users or specific employee monitoring now what happens is that there are 
EASM platform, external attack surface management platforms that continuously scan internet for these data points and that's how you get to know all this okay there are certain open source services or products available uh, but one of the key things that we have to consider is false positive ratio and in the commercially available tool what i've seen is there is some manual intervention involved and the, this helps with the false positive ratios okay now that was external easm let's look at the internal asm okay now this is a term with, which is it, that's not very common but essentially it's referred to anything that can help you understand the known uh, asset landscape now this the most common platform that we use for this is vulnerability management platform so you scan your entire known uh, asset landscape using a passive or an active uh, vulnerability management platform and then you have agent installed like and and the viruses or endpoint protection platforms and or you do penetration testing whether manually uh, by engaging some service provider your internal teams or using the modern automated penetration testing platform okay that's how you get to know the exposure of the various uh, assets that are managed by your organization so example you would know hey i have 100000 assets i'm just give, making a number uh, 100,000 assets, some of them have the, you know, log4j server running, some of them have FTP running, which was approved or not approved, okay. Maybe it is approved, but it is badly configured, which is leading to a particular uh, exposure that can be exploited by a cyber criminal. That's a very basic example of uh, internal ESM. Now, let's look at how the external ASM works. You know, internal is pretty simple, as you can imagine. You know the assets, it's simply simple to detect them. Now. How external ESM works is it scans public records like IP ranges, who is, any registration authorities, all that data that is publicly available. Certain uh, vendors also sample uh, the internet flow data by working with ISPs, they work with service providers uh, on emails, they work, uh, they have APIs available to take data and they are paying uh, uh, some of the service providers who give uh, that information. Now once you have the data, the prioritization is done based on discoverability of this asset, exploitability and attractiveness of these assets. Whatever records are captured, they are deduplicated, enriched, etc. so that they can be properly used. Now remember, I'm not referring to a particular product, I'm generally talking about the domain. Okay. Now another adjacent tool or domain that has common use cases with ESM or ASM is the digital risk protection services or DRP platforms as well as threat intelligence, okay? So if you look at the DRP uh, services, now these solutions provide visibility into the open uh, web, social media, dark web and deep web sources to identify potential threats to critical assets. They also provide contextual information on threat actors, their tools, tactics and processes for conducting malicious activity, okay? Now that's the high level definition uh, of DRP right but the use cases have been uh, that are very common are brand protection which is the most popular one so essentially it identifies fake sites or URLs related to your brand fake apps typo squatting domains fake social media profiles of a brand so cyber criminals often try to create fake profiles to lure innocent people to either give their credentials or uh, some uh, money uh, uh, posing as a brand right so brand protection is one common use case that is employed by lot of uh, organizations and it is mandated by compliances also in most of the countries okay then it also focuses on high value target monitoring data leakage detection misinformation disinformation monitoring account takeover attempts uh, in monitoring of specific employees threat intelligence analysis, social media threats, credentials, right? So these are the common use cases that are done by DRP platforms. My personal exposure to DRP platform happened in 2007 and eight in one of my previous organization, they had a very uh, uh, popular product focus on brand monitoring, okay? Uh, now, eventually what happens is once you have this information as an organization, you move into remediation and remediation uh, typically is takedown of uh, these sites and URLs or apps that are not approved by organization. So the company that I was, uh, I used to work for, they had this uh, contract with uh, the backend service providers like the ISPs or the domain uh, 
service providers or the hosting services to take down the uh, particular uh, platform also a lot of them work with the certs government agencies to uh, execute the takedown service now also if i have to compare drp and esm okay the there are certain common use cases so asset discovery data leakage detection third party security monitoring mna due diligence that's provided by drp platforms and esm platforms also now not all drp platforms will provide things like asset discovery but certain uh, providers have that capability okay but the focus is if i have to look at the focus the focus is mostly on the brand uh, monitoring side okay uh, now the difference between two is that esm specifically focuses on public facing asset discovery ips domain certs it ot devices okay drp on the other hand focuses more on employees credentials social media brand protection all that right so if you start comparing the tools you have to look at the major capabilities of all both these platforms esm platforms will typically talk about the external facing assets whereas drp platforms which also have threat intelligence capabilities will talk about the brand, brand monitoring and any intelligence that can be used by the organization to make decisions okay now if i have to summarize there are a lot of common use cases but what's happening in the industries now is that convergence or consolidation is already happening there are providers of drp who are moving to esm esm platforms are getting the drp capabilities okay uh, also there are beach simulation platforms uh, that are also trying to build this esm capability uh, and also try to penetrate them and you know check uh, these uh, uh, the the exposure uh, or the vulnerability of these publicly facing assets okay so that's drp versus asm now if i have to compare the market size by 2026 idc forecast worldwide asm software revenue to reach around a billion dollar specifically they have given a number of 930 million dollars and it is growing at a CAGR of 17.5% through 2026 on the other hand drp market is much larger it is projected to reach 7.65 billion dollar by 2028 at a CAGR of 6.8% during this forecast period of uh, 2022 to 2028 and this is a report by markets and markets so drp is a bigger market a esm started it is a smaller market but is a very critical use case for organizations to understand their attack surface okay and as i said both will converge now let's look at how it asm is used in the soc okay now one uh, you as an enterprise or as an end user you can build a single repository or console for uh, tracking all the assets and you know essentially there's a technology called uh, cyber asset attack surface management Uh, C A A S M that does this job exactly. So these platforms they allow organizations to see all assets, internal, external, both. So manage and not manage, primarily through API integrations with existing tools. They query consolidated data. Uh, you know they help you identify the scope of vulnerabilities and gaps in security controls and have remediation uh, workflows. Typically, as you can imagine, they would integrate with E S M tools, I S M tools, D R P tools, etc. so this is common now what i have personally seen is people or organizations don't invest in csm platform they typically go with esm platforms drp platforms and all the issues or findings that are reported to this platform are getting consolidated at a ticketing level that's how they track the workflows or even at the sole level okay now let's look at the second part of how the asm can be used in soc is it's also used for enrichment and contextualization okay so example let's say there's a new public facing assets that discovered it is consumed as a ticket more context can be added uh, from historical data if it is available so this could include things like you know relationships based on users that have uh, shown some activity so if somebody uh, there was a log coming from sim and you know somebody had a failed authentication or alert around it incidents if, Uh, from historical context as well as any domains ip sets are that have made a any sort of relationship with this data okay now breach and attack simulation platform can also simulate uh, new open asset discovery and and check how socks will respond if there is a new critical asset that is discovered by the sock okay uh, 
also they can take data from cmdbs to map the asset with business relationship this will help sox to prioritize okay now for remediation it as you can imagine this depends on the workflow of the organization or how their processes are ideally it should be automatic but as you can imagine hybrid is the common way so let's say there is a new aws uh, based asset that is discovered it's not approved by uh, the aws uh, owner in the organization then the sock will have to follow a process they can simply write a script that send an email uh, and that if that email comes with a valid approval you you allow the asset and or you apply some baseline hardening you push the standard uh, uh, gold image or the standard agent recommended by your uh, uh, organization or you shut down the asset uh, depending on the workflow of the uh, this particular organization in uh, that has discovered this now how are asm technologies available in the market right so there are over 100 platforms that exist in both drp and easm domains vendors in adjoining domains of vulnerability management breach and attack simulation automated pen testing platforms and xdr platforms are also offering easm capabilities now what i have been uh, realizing is that for last 2 3 years consolidation has become very common there are too many platforms that are used by enterprises. It is confusing. There is not enough skill set available. So consolidation is is getting done by uh, large players in the cybersecurity markets. Also, these platforms are available as a service by service providers, MSSPs, and MDRs at a, a one-time or a continuous scanning uh, fees. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, I'm thankful uh, to you for listening to this content as well as like share and subscribe if you find this content useful uh, it will help uh, other people to learn also uh, it can get into their recommendation it helps everyone with that thank you so much i'll see you next time